Hi, my name is Randy Wilkin, President and CEO of MACNI, the Manufacturers Association, and the Manufacturers Alliance of New York State. This is my COVID-19 update for Tuesday, April 28th. At the governor's press briefing today, he emphasized that the curve continues on a downward trajectory. The number of new COVID hospitalizations yesterday was below 1,000. There were a total of 335 COVID-related deaths on April 27th. 306 were hospital deaths, 29 were in nursing homes. This continues the trend downward and is generally flat. A total of 17,668 New Yorkers have died due to COVID-19. The state will be using two main data points for reopening based on the facts. If a hospital system in an area exceeds 70% of capacity or the rate of transmission of the virus hits 1.1, those are danger signs. Reopening will not happen unless you have rates below those factors. New York State is unique. We have New York City, which is one of the densest areas on the globe, and upstate, which is much different. The percentage of tests that are positive in upstate is comparable to many states in the Midwest. The governor reiterated the unpaused New York will be based on upon a regional analysis with everyone working off the same data points and opening template. The governor emphasized that we have to be smart about this and take into account many factors, including that if the region has met the CDC 14-day guidelines, healthcare capacity, how to handle isolation, home versus hotels, and not opening attractive nuisances that bring people in from outside that region and ensuring that the regional plan fits with the overall state and multi-state plan. When dissecting the business reopening phase one, which will include construction and manufacturing jobs, these sectors not only employ a lot of people, but also are able to put into place proper precautions. Phase two will involve identifying how businesses can incorporate what we've learned. In order to reopen, businesses must plan to, on how to institute social distancing and testing while operating. Social distancing, continued testing, and ongoing monitoring protocols are all a part of the new normal. What we've now learned is manufacturing can open safely as long as it's low risks. So if you're not fully open or you'd like to open, it's time now to prepare your plan. MACNI can help you prepare that plan so that you get a chance to work with other manufacturers who have been successful in staying open and keeping their people safe. We have just such a program called Keeping Our People Safe and Our Factories Open. Please contact us so we can help you get started on your plan as you begin to get ready to implement it. We're not going back. We're now implementing the new normal. And we would expect this to be with us for the next year or two or longer. The governor also announced the creation of a New York Forward Reopening Advisory Board, which included 100 business community and civic leaders. You can see this list on our website. For healthcare capacity, factors such as how many beds versus ICU beds are available, and the plans for flu season will have to be taken into account. The healthcare system cannot go over 70% of capacity for hospitals and ICU beds. When, with flu season coming in the fall, hospitalization rates will go up, and that must be anticipated by having PPE in reserve in place. Testing will be the key, uh, one of the key elements for moving forward. In order for testing to be effective, it must be frequent, have the right number of testing sites in accessible locations, and the regions must fully advertise testing locations. The state will work off of the federal government recommendations of 30 tests per 1,000 people per month. The state will prioritize symptomatic people, individuals who have come into contact with symptomatic people, and frontline and essential workers. Contact testing must be effectively implemented as well. Working with Mayor Bloomberg on that. And there must be at least 30 contact tracers for every 100,000 people, taking into consideration the regional inflection 
and infection rates. The governor reiterated the importance of creating a regional control room that is to look at what we must monitor so that can, we can reopen safely and then what's happening? Gather the data, the hospital capacity, rate of infections, PPE burn rate, and of course businesses into one central place we can gauge on a daily basis to determine our next step. Regarding public transportation workers, the governor addressed the issue of homeless people on the subway in New York City and that we have to and will have to do a better job to make sure the homeless are protected as well as our essential workers. $3.1 billion in unemployment is paid, and paid out as of Friday, April 24th. The state has 3,000 people manning phones to work on claims, but even as they work through the backlog, it continues to build. There are approximately 400,000 outstanding claims, most of which are pandemic unemployment insurance, something the state has never dealt with before. Per DeRosa, the executive order on a 90-day ban on evictions will be extended if it needs to be in order to accommodate this backlog. Many of the summer attractions around the state, such as the State Fair, will fall under the attractive nuisance and may not be able to take place unless proper precautions are in place or we see a change in the virus. Decisions will be made at the end of this week on both schools and potential summer schools. Regarding private colleges and SUNY, cannot yet tell what September will look like. It's still a long way away. The guidance will be released later today on elective surgeries for regions that could consume, uh, excuse me, resume. There are some updates on New York State Education Department related to services to students with disabilities during the statewide school closures. There's information on the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Uh, Empire State Development has made no changes to its designation of essential services. And New York State uh, has a few updates related to Office of Administrative Trials and Hearings. You can find all this information on our website. We've made some positive steps more recently for manufacturers, specifically the, the opportunity to begin opening additional manufacturers uh, in their, in their um, in current facilities that are open but not fully open. Uh, we've made great progress here. I know I've been on numerous conversations with state officials and I really applaud them for trying to move us forward in a thoughtful way that keeps people safe and allows us to reopen our economy. I applaud the governor and his team for the hard work. I know how hard they're working there and they're constantly working at this. So I applaud them for this. We at MACNE will help you in any way we can to stay open and to get open. We have a successful group of manufacturers who are doing it right now. So we know it can be done and we know we can help you do it. We're readily available working from home and we'll help you in any way we can. So please uh, know that we'll be here, a smile, maybe try to get out and see a little bit of the sunshine as we start to approach spring. And of course, as always, be calm. Stay safe and carry on. Have a nice evening.